true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Freedom, though you captured me, I've got joy instead of mourning. Hallelujah. Why don't we magnify him again, church? He's good to us. Amen. There's beauty in our brokenness. Hallelujah. For ushers to get ready, we'll take up our tithe and offering. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's the source of our joy. If you'll say this with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's enter back into worship. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How do you love me?
Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Aren't you glad that the creator of all things has called you friend today? You are a friend of God. You're not just a servant, but you are his friend. He sticks closer than a brother. I'm so glad that I'm on God's side. And I'm glad that he's on my side. The Bible tells me if God be for us, who or what can be against us? I don't ever want God on my bad side. I want God on my good side. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God on my good side. And I'm so thankful for that. Come on, can we magnify him one more time today, church? Oh, we thank you, God. We thank you for the Alpha being the Alpha and the Omega. He is the giver of life, the creator of all things. He holds you in his palm of his hands today. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Man, I don't know about you guys today, but it's been hot. It's been a really hot day. I've been inside of a grain bin today for a couple hours, and it's about 197 degrees in there. And thank God that he's my friend, because he kept me alive inside that grain bin. Thank God for that. We have a lot to pray for. We're going to pray for Sister Whitley. Yvonne Sisk, that's Sister Barnes' grandson. I believe he's doing okay. Evan. Evan. Evan, I'm sorry. Evan Sisk. Marilyn Jansen. Daniel Stevens, Isaac Andrews, basic training. Ukraine, our missionaries, our prodigals. I believe Brother Hall still needs prayer. And I believe our First Lady also needs prayer. Amen. So we're going to pray for all those needs today. You have a need today? Raise your hands. Amen. And when I say don't say unspoken, speak it. If you have a need, let God, let God hear it. He knows the very thoughts of what we think, but let him, let him hear your thoughts. Let him, let, Lord, I need you. And I believe today he can, he can feel that for you. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence today, God. Lord, we need you right now to move on these situations, God. We're asking right now to lend us your ear today, God. We're praying for every sickness today, God, by the authority of the word of God and in the name of Jesus. Let it be done at your word today, God. Let there be healings right now, Father. We're praying for Sister Wells today, God, that you'll let them lungs, let, let them lungs work, God. Put breath in her life today, God. We're praying for Brother Hall's this pain today, God. We're praying for our nation, for our city today, God. We're praying for our service to be anointing to flow through this place today, God. Let there be less, let there be restoration today, God. Let the city, God, know who you are today. Let this nation know who you are today, God. Lord, help us in the middle of our chaos today, God. We pray for our missionaries today, Father. Our prodigals today, God. Those that are lost today. Our family members today, God. Every hand that was raised today, God. I speak the name of Jesus. Jesus right now, God. Lord, let there be prophetic happen today, God. We give you glory and we give you honor today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody said amen in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's worship today.
Give the Lord another great hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is thankful for whoever it was that invented air condition. Amen. I'm thankful that, uh, amen, it began somewhere with the thought that there's got to be some way of doing this. I don't know where it came from, but aren't you thankful that somebody thought of it and stayed with it and God gave him the ability to to create it. Amen. And uh, I know some here, this, well, Brother Anthony, he, his, his air conditioning at home is not working well. So, amen. Thank God there's repairmen that, uh, but anyway, it is, um, it is hot and uh, amen. It drains people and, and uh, they're here in this, uh, what we call our halftime. This is our halftime gathering here in the middle of the week and, and you can you can feel it. Some of you, it, it zapped us out, but I'm, I'm thankful for the goodness of God, whether it's hot, cold, whatever. And, and there are people in this room today that enjoy this. There are people in this room today that don't enjoy this. Amen. Nobody can all, ever completely agree on a temperature, right? So anyway, you just do what you got to do. But it's great to be in the house of the Lord here this evening. And you can be seated for a moment. I... Um, I'm thankful again for the Lord and and His goodness. I failed to charge my iPad, so I've got 10% battery. So that will determine whether I go long or not. So anyway, amen. Um, again, thankful for the, the Lord and His goodness. I have, if, if you'll allow me just a, a little bit here today... Um, Amen. It has been a journey for me uh, these last few weeks. Um, amen. Those of you that, again, has lost a parent, um, you know, it, you've, been, you've been there. You've, you've, I don't think you ever get through it completely, but it, it has put me on a journey. Um, I've learned that I, I have certain ways of coping that um, I, I would have never admitted to. I would I would have never said that that's what I do. Uh, but when Dad died, uh, my world kind of stopped. And 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 honestly, it, I'm thankful for the fact that it it, it really um, made me or or caused me to to take a little deeper look into my own life. And um, again, that's not always a pleasant experience. Amen. Um, but I, I, I committed, uh, and I've done this every, I, I have missed one day, but every day I have, I, I've committed to write words on paper, just me, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. And, uh, honestly, there, there were a few mornings where I thought, you know, what, what else is there to say? And then I would find that there would be still stuff that would come out and, and uh, some of it was just blatant honesty with myself, blatant honesty with God. And, but it, it's been good, and, I, and I'm thankful for it because more than anything else, it's helping me see this guy. I, I often say, and I, I believe it's so true, that your perception is your reality. However you perceive, whether that is correct or whether it's incorrect, if it's your perception, it's your reality. And there is something inside of me that I, I don't want just a, you know, I don't want a perception that is, that's cozy to me. I want to be, I want to be real and I want to be right with God. All right. I don't want to have this perceived idea that everything's okay when maybe things aren't. And so there's been a lot of, a lot of, a lot of disclosure, if you will, to between me and God even. And it's amazing. Scripture says that, and, and I've said this many times, Scripture says that, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's very easy for us to, to identify or notice the speck that is in our neighbor's eye, but be completely oblivious to the beam that is in our own eye. Amen? So it's, it's so much easier to notice your imperfections than to be aware of my own. 
And so I, I'm learning, and, and, I, and I believe that, that for us to really see, not just see us, but to see, and if I could put it under this big umbrella, for us to see truth, amen, we've got to be willing to face some things that we kind of live in denial of. How many here are thankful for truth today? The Bible puts a tremendous value on truth. It says that when you buy truth, you should never sell it. And I, I believe that. The question was asked to Jesus, what is truth? Well, truth is his word, right? Amen, I believe that. Uh, John even wrote that you shall know the truth, and the truth will do what? It will make you free. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. But there's a very key phrase in that setting of Scripture, and, and some would say, well, that must be the word truth. Well, no, but the word is actually no. You shall, he that knows the truth. You got to know the truth for the truth to be effective in your life. We live in a very, very upside down world today. Amen. We do live in a time, and, and Bruce mentioned to, to us in our end time teaching Sunday that we're living in an hour where, where good is called evil and evil is called good. Amen. And, and we, we live where, where we hear the phrase that, you know, to, to each his own, or, or whatever your version of truth is. Let me, let, me, let me, and I think we all understand this, there isn't various versions of truth. Amen. Because again, this, I, I believe in the Word of God. I believe this is my authority. I, I, I cannot add to this. I cannot take away from this. And so it's very important that I understand the truth. So, so to, to understand truth is to know truth. And to know truth is how we get affected by truth, if you will. But the journey, I believe, begins with you and I being, being honest with ourselves, being honest with God. And how many here have a desire within you to, Lord, change me if, if I need to change? I don't know why, but, but with me, it's, I, I want to be a better version of me. And, and, and it's not to say that, that well, the reason I want to be a better version of me is because I'm such a horrible person. I, I don't know that any of us here tonight are horrible people. But I would say probably all of us tonight would say, well, yeah, there is that one area I could maybe do a little better in. I was reading an article about Adolf Hitler, and, and, and the article was, was, it was on purpose. But when I first started reading this article, I would not have known it was Adolf Hitler. Because there was parts of Adolf Hitler that would appear to be a rather nice neighbor. He loved dogs. I mean, there was part of Adolf Hitler that... But, but again, we hear the name Adolf Hitler and we immediately think of Nazis and concentration camps. And, I mean, and, and he was a very evil man, don't get me wrong. But, but there were parts of him, if you only knew that one part of him, you'd think, well, this guy's not that bad. But, but to the Jews over here... You know, so what I'm saying is there, there are various facets of who we are. And it's easy for me to, to, to say, well, not all of me is bad. Or, or, or we'll do this, I call it caparagans. At least I'm not as bad as so-and-so, right? That doesn't change me, though. At least I'm not as bad as Adolf Hitler. Well, okay, but that don't change me, right? So, so again, it's, and I think it all comes back to this reality of, God, i got to have you. And I need to come to you without having any mask on, and how do I do that but by beginning at an altar and becoming, again, open with God? I, I know that, that we as a church are not, uh, and I'm not just speaking of us as a congregation. I'm talking about the church in general. We're not, a, we're not perfect. Amen. And, and again, I know that we, we try to hold ourselves to a very high standard, and, and that's, that's, that's good, and I think that's very important. But, but I think it's also important to realize, you know what? There's sometimes the human element of us gets in the way. Amen? And, and again, it, admitting that may, may not be easy to do, but, but that is reality. Now, again, just because we're human don't mean, well, we're just not going to be, you know, we're, we're going to have problems. and That don't give us an excuse to make mistakes. But my point of this is I want to continually strive. I want to be better than what I am. 
And, there, and again, this is not about how good I am or the works I do. It's about the work that God wants to do in my life. And I want to give God full access to me to make the changes I need to meet, have made in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, again, I, I love being in a Pentecostal church. I'll be honest with you. When I go to another church that's not as lively, to, for me now, it's because this is... This is what I prefer. This is what it's a little awkward to be in a quiet, reserved church. I was raised in that, but but now this has become my normal. I love this, and and there are some that will say, "Well, you we're just we're just you know we're too emotional," and I've said it many times. It is emotional, but it's not just about emotion. But we got to be careful because sometimes we rely on emotion more than anything else, right? I remember years ago, I was in a service, and again, I've, I've shared this before, but and, and I, I hadn't been in church very long, and, and we were in a, a rally service, and, and man, people were worshiping, and, and the sound system wasn't real clear, and, and so the preacher was up there preaching, and he would get in the mic, and you couldn't really hear, it was just a muffle, you know, rah, 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 and, and, and man, he would do that, and people would jump up and start shouting. And I remember uh, my neighbor said, what, 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 did, what did he say? He like, I don't know, but it must have been good. So, you know, they were, and again, I understand that, but I don't want to just respond to a, to a noise level, right? Yes. I need something to get inside the heart here today. Amen. 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 And again, I, 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 I think it's okay to, to admit that we're not, we're not perfect, but, but, but this, this evening, my, my, my desire... I don't want to put confidence in anything else but, but the one that I need to put confidence into. I want to go to the book of Jeremiah to begin here this evening. I'm teaching or talking or preaching, whatever you want to call it. My, 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 my subject or my thought is on the wrong side of trust. I don't want to find myself on the wrong side of it. Because here's reality. Whether, and, and most likely we're all people of faith here, right? Because this is a place of faith. But, but regardless of where we are in, in our relationship with God, or, you're going to trust something. You're going to put confidence in something. Amen? Now, if, if, you're, if you're putting confidence in the weatherman to get this cooler temperatures, good luck. If it works, I'll join you tomorrow, the next day. But, but again, there, but you're going to put confidence somewhere. You're going to put your trust. Whether you claim to be a person of great faith or not, somewhere. And I want to make sure that I'm on the right side of this trust line. Jeremiah 17, verse 5, he says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. For he will be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he will be like a tree planted by the waters which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. Amen. <laughs> but, it, but its leaf will be green and it will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. But the heart is seedful, deceitful among, above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10, I the Lord search the heart, test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings cursed is the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his strength amen but blessed is the man who trusts in the lord I, again in the in the the audience that i am in front of here this evening that's a no-brainer we all will agree blessed is the man to trust in the lord that's yeah but but again, as I as I began here this evening, that that is something we will all be in agreement of and with. But sometimes the application of that doesn't always hit the target where it needs to hit. Because trusting in God, although that is the obvious choice, how many here has faced things in life where that has not been the easiest choice to make? 
Amen. There are moments and there are times where all logic tells you it's better to do the other option. That makes more sense, but, but I'm telling you, I have found it to be true and over and over God has proven himself that when I choose to trust him, even when there was no evidence, <laughs> amen, it's kind of like the, the tightrope walker, his name was Blondin back in the early 20th century, and he would walk that trapeze rope across the Niagara Falls. And he did it time, he did like three or four different times, and he came back, and, and this time he, he took a, he took a wheelbarrow, and he, he pushed the wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls, and he came back. And by this time, there was a large crowd of people that had gathered watching him, and he said, I wonder, is there anybody, do any of you think or believe that I could push you in this wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls? Everybody raised their hands that they believe he could do it. He said, okay, can I get someone to volunteer? Nobody volunteered. They believed he could, but nobody wanted to put themselves... Again, that's kind of where we are at times. Not all the time, but sometimes we're in moments where we feel like, God, I, I really believe you can, but, but what if you don't? <laughs> I mean, there's so many other factors that we don't control and, and we don't understand and we're not able to wrap our minds around. But I'm here to tell you, again, I'm preaching to the choir, it is always better to trust in Him. I can honestly stand here today in the 47 years I've been alive... I had to do the quick math. God has never failed me. Now, he's not always done things the way I thought he should. And there were times when I was thinking, God, are you, are you really sure you're knowing what you're doing? But I'm here to tell you, God has always known what he was doing. And I, I will never go back and say, you know what? I should not have trusted God. I am thankful in the times when I've chose to trust God. When everything inside me said, man, that may not be the best choice. He has never failed me. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Yes, amen. amen. My family and I, we were living in Hannibal and uh, we had we had been there about nine months, and we were living. I've told you the story. We were living inside the church in the evangelist quarters, all five of us. Oh, it was a wonderful time. <laughs> Amen. Just wonderful, man. We just loved living inside the church, right? And I remember again. We knew it wasn't permanent, but I'm telling you, nine months it felt like it was permanent. And we're praying, God. You know, I know I know you're going to open the door at some at some point. I know something's going to open up here. And we were entering into the summertime, and, 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 and God, well, it kind of seemed like maybe the Lord had opened up a door. And so we, had, uh, we, we, were, we, were, we were contacted. They, 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 an opening of a church came, came available, and, and, and they wanted us to come down and preach for them and, you know, kind of, kind of try out, as they say. And so we went there and thinking, okay, God, this might be you, you know. And at this point, I'll be honest with you, anything looked better than that one-room apartment, Amen. We get there and we meet with some of the church and the financial status was, was pretty good. They could, they could take care of us. And I mean, you know, so, so, but here I, I get in the, in the, in the pulpit on that Sunday morning. And I, and again, I, I'm not, my wife's the one that God speaks to like almost in an audible voice. I don't get that very often, but I stepped in that pulpit and God spoke to me. This is not the place. I went ahead and we preached God moved. We had, had a gentleman get the Holy Ghost. I mean, I remember calling my pastor, Brother Leg, that afternoon, saying, Brother Leg, man, I don't know. <laughs> this is what's going on. This is, he's like, man, that really sounds good. And I said, but, but I, this is what I felt God speak to me when I stepped in the pulpit. And he quoted me Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6 that day. He said, well, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, he, 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 and he emphasized, in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Again, be honest with you, it, it, I, I, need, I, I was wanting a little bit more direction than that. I was wanting my pastor to say, hey, brother, well, you need to go ahead and do this, or hey, brother, well, don't you? But he, he left that into, for me to trust him. And I remember we, we, we got in the car the next day and we were heading back to Hannibal, back to our one-bedroom apartment. 
And I knew what I, I knew what I felt God had spoke to me. And so we were about Chesterfield, and I got on the phone. I called, I called the, 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 the main guy of the board. I said, listen, I just, you know, we're withdrawing our name. No, no, nothing, nothing was done wrong. We, we appreciate you. Y'all, y'all were very kind to us, but we're withdrawing our name. He was disappointed. And again, I knew what God had said. The irony of that is around that same time, there was, there was someone that was trying out the church here. And, you know, thought the thing looked really good. Well, guess what? He didn't go here, but he went where I, had, where, I had, where I felt God told me not to go. And then God brought me here. Anyway, it's amazing how God works things out. But we don't always get the full inside scoop. There is an element of wanting to trust and, and believing that He will direct our paths. Amen. We preached about it Sunday morning of how God had instructed Israel. This is in Deuteronomy. All right. He said, when you, when you get where you're going and, and you get a king, make sure that that king does not basically take you back to where I have brought you from. Don't let, don't let him allow Egypt to influence you. Don't, don't have any allegiances with or alliances with Egypt. That, that's a theme. If you, if you read in the Old Testament, there were, there were several times where the, where the people of God were wanting to have an alliance with Egypt. And again, we talked about it Sunday that, you know, it was in Egypt that they had taskmasters. And it was in Egypt that they, they made them live their lives with rigor, which, with harshness. And, and it was God who miraculously delivered them from there. But there's something about that, that, uh, that alluring of Egypt. Why, why is it? Well, Egypt symbolized, obviously, in the Word of God, it's synonymous with, with what we call the world. But there's things about the world that not only are they attractive... But they're appealing. Amen, right? I mean, you know, if, if you were to sell your soul to the devil for like $400 zillion, I mean, we as a faith base would say that's wrong. But, but people in the world was like, you ain't got no more worries, man. I mean, if you've got that kind of money, you, you, I mean, because for them, that's what security looks like. Right? Is, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if you never had to balance your checkbook? Because you knew there would never be a way you could ever spend all the money. I mean, LeBron James and all these guys that make millions, now billions of dollars, they'll never spend, they don't have enough life left to spend their money. And, and the world says that's security. I'm telling you, friend, that's not security. I have known people who are very wealthy, who are miserable people. It's not about money, right? Amen. It's a, again, we put trust in, but the thing with Egypt is the reason why that Israel would want to have these alliances with Egypt is because Egypt had what they called or considered security. Isaiah chapter 30. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord. Who take counsel not, but not to me of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit, and they they may add sin to sin. Who walk to go down to Egypt, and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. And for the princes are were of, of at Zone and or Zoan, and the ambassadors came to Hanes, and and they they that they were all uh, all ashamed of the people who could not benefit them or be a benefit or or be help or benefit, but a shame and also a reproach. And skip down to verse seven: for the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I have called her. Rahab Himshabeth, which means to sit idle, or in one translation, it means to be a harmless dragon. Because in God's view, no matter how many horses Egypt has, they're not security. God is saying it's better to trust in me than in, the, than in Egypt or the Pharaoh of Egypt. Amen. And I know again, you and I are like, yeah, absolutely. That is truth, Pastor. But, but Judah was seeking a political alliance with Egypt 
And the purpose was they had an enemy from that's called Assyria that was attacking them and, and they, they put more faith or trust in Egypt rather than trusting in God. I don't care how good it looks. It ain't enough. Amen. Now in the world view, the world makes it look like like, you know, in a basketball analogy, LeBron James is your greatest choice. Whatever. All right? And, 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 and in the world's view, God's choice looks like, y'all remember Spud Webb? <laughs> Five foot three. But again, I'm telling you, it may look that way, but it, that is not the way it is. I'm telling you, friend, just like the prophet or the, the servant to Elisha when he said, hey, we are surrounded by an enemy's host. What are we going to do? And the prophet says, don't you worry about it. Don't be afraid. There are more with us that are with him, with them. And I'm telling you, they don't, you don't see it. It may not appear that way, but there is more with us in trusting in God than all the horses that Egypt could ever have. Amen. Because again, God is greater. Isaiah 31 says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong, but who do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. I'm telling you, friend, God is your best option. Amen. I love to be able to preach about Jehoshaphat. I love to say his name. Jehoshaphat was a king uh, of, of Judah, I believe, of Judah. And we read in 2 Chronicles 20 where, again, a great enemy has come against them. And he, he turns to God. And the Bible tells us in verse 14, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. And, uh, and this is what he said. He said, listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord, you do not be afraid nor dismay because of this great multitude. There was a great multitude coming against them. It looked as if there was no way they could escape. But the Lord says, don't worry about this multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it is God's. And this is where God instructed them to put the choir on the front line, right? Which is not, that is not a normal military strategy. But it worked because God does amazing things. And the praise team went on the front line and they began to worship. And all of a sudden the Bible says that God set ambushments against the multitude, which means God can came out of hiding. He was always there, but nobody could see him. But all of a sudden, he was there and he took care of the great multitude. It is better to trust in the Lord. And so he does this. But in the very same chapter, in verse 35, the Bible says, after this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, he allied himself with Ahaziah, the king of Israel, who acted very wickedly. Come on, Jehoshaphat. You just witnessed the, the power of the hand of God. Why are you al alliancing with, or allying with this wicked king? Amen. Well, a little, little context here. Second Chronicles 18 and verse 1. Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. And by marriage, he allied himself with Ahab. Ahab was a wicked king, right? Amen. There was things in the roots, if you will, of his life. Amen. That were there. Maybe they were hidden. And I, I'll go as far as even possibly to say, maybe he wasn't even aware they were there. Is that even possible? Could you have something in you, and I'm saying within your spirit, your soul, that, that would be, in essence, wicked, and you not even be aware of it? Can I propose to you this morning or this evening that that is, I think, is possible? Again, David, Psalms 139, he, he prays, the Lord, search me, know my heart. I mean, we just read in Jeremiah that the heart is, 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 is terribly wicked. Who, who can know? I, I, I feel and believe through deception, you and I can be deceived in our own selves. I'm telling you, we are in desperate need of a great God. We cannot do this on our own. 
We cannot just think, well, I'm, I've been in this long enough. I know enough. I, I, I'm good. Let me tell you, friend, I don't care whether, you, whether you've been in this for days, months, years, or generations. We never, ever cease having a dependency upon God. I've got to have God. I've got to walk with God. It's got to be something I do on a daily basis. Amen. And so... The Bible says in verse 37, Jehoshaphat, because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has destroyed your works. So we go back to Solomon. Solomon, wise king, right? Amen. And he, he was wise, and God, God did bless him. But we, read, we, we referenced this Sunday, 1 Kings 3 and 1, that now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. He did the very thing that God said they shouldn't do. He was making an alliance with Egypt. And again, it's my opinion. I, I, don't, I don't have scripture and verse to prove this. But I believe that the reason Solomon did this was as a backup plan. If for whatever reason things didn't work out with God, at least he had a powerful ally with Egypt. And again, if, if there is no backup plan with God. God is not a, just, an, he's not just a, your best option. In reality, he's your only option. Amen. And, and so again, our trust is in him. Psalms 146 and 3. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. Psalms 33 and 16. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, on those who hope in His mercy, to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we've trusted in His holy name. Let Your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope. Hope in you. He's not just my plan. I don't have a plan B with, with, with God. I mean, the reality is, it's kind of like the old saying is, I, I have put all of my eggs in one basket, and I have handed that basket to God. There is no, well, what if this don't work? Well, we're sunk then. <laughs> but I, 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 can, I can attest and I believe I am in a, in a group of witnesses that can say, you know what, Pastor, you're right. God has never failed me. You're right. He hasn't always worked things out the way I thought he should. But I'm telling you, if you'll hang in there, you'll find out that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and you're called according to his purpose. Isaiah chapter 2 Verse 7, their land is, is also full of silver and gold. And there is no end to their treasures. I remember my wife and I, when we first got married, we, we, we had Macy uh, within, well, almost within a year. Not quite. We were married in December. She was born in March. And uh, I, I was working, I was making a fortune at Town & Country. Just making a fortune, guys, I'm telling you. I think I got paid like $4.25 an hour. I mean, we were rolling in the dough, all right? We lived in a little apartment. Uh, we made, I think our rent was $160 a month. Woo! Had a car payment of $123. I mean, I'm telling you, we were just living the high life. Honestly, no, we weren't. We, <laughs> but we made it. And I remember I had a job opportunity come, come available and uh, we, we, it, would, it would double my pay, all right? I know $8 don't sound like a lot now, but back then, that was like huge. And, uh, but, but the problem was, it was going to be a conflict with church. And I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even have to think about it very long. I said, nope, I'm not going there. And I, I had some peers that were like, man, are you sure about that? I mean, it's yours. If you want it, it's yours. Nope. It's going, to, it's going to be too, too much of a conflict with, with church. And at that time, I was just starting in ministry. You know what? I had people look at me thinking I was crazy. I never questioned it because I knew God was more important than money. And I, I, I can stand here today and tell you, God took care of us. We did not have an abundance, but we always had enough. Amen. 
My point is, the land may look like it's full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasure. Their land is also full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. But here is the issue. Their land is also full of idols. Can I tell you tonight, you cannot mix the two. You can't live one way and, and, and another. I mean, there is no, there is no walking offense with it. It's, I'm, and I promise you, you will never go wrong with God. They worship the work of their own hands, that, that which their own fingers have made. I mean, the, and again, I, I'm reminded of Romans chapter 1 where, where Paul is describing the generation he is in, which also describes the generation we're living in, that, amen, they didn't glorify him as God, they were not thankful, they became futile in their thoughts, and they were, their foolish hearts were darkened, they professed to be wise, became fools, they changed their glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, uh, birds, four-footed animals, creeping things, therefore God gave them up to un cleanness in the lust of their hearts and dishonor their bodies among themselves talks about homosexuality uh, goes on in verse 28 they did not like to re- they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a, deba- a debased mind to do those things which were not fitting and being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness uh, full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness they were whisperers backbiters haters of God violent proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents undiscerning untrustworthy unloving unforgiving and unmerciful how did they get there it began well towards the beginning there was they did not glorify him as god nor were they thankful why would they not be thankful because they started taking thinking look look what we can do i'm telling you church i don't care i've been in this 30 years now it doesn't matter. I, I, I've got I've to have an altar in my life on a daily basis. If I've learned anything in the last four, almost five weeks, is that there were still some things in this heart that did not need to be there. You say, oh my goodness, Pastor, what are you... I'm, I'm being transparent. But I'm telling you, if, if we're not intentional in this regard, we can find ourselves on the wrong side of trust and not even realize it. I want to be real. I want to change. I want to be better. Not, not, not by works, but by allowing Him to take His hands and mold me the way that He needs to mold me. Amen. God brought Israel out of Egypt. And uh, as I mentioned Sunday, Solomon brought Egypt back into Israel. Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 and 1, he said, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So Paul, in his writing here, he kind of equates the Exodus story to the New Testament salvation. All right? By, again, comparing the crossing of the Red Sea to water baptism. And, And there are some wonderful analogies here. Because it was after they crossed to the Red Sea that Egypt, which again represents the world, represents sin, I mean, they were, they, they, they were all perished in the water. That's why when, when Peter stood up with the other eleven and, 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 and they were asked, what shall we do? And he said, well, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But, amen. So, by crossing... Out of Egypt, or, or crossing out of Egypt, Israel left sinful Egyptian culture behind. All right. So, with this understanding, we can use the example of Solomon bringing Egyptian influence back to Israel as a caution against bringing previous sin back into our own lives. Now, again. You, you know, you know me. I, I'm not. I'm not a clothesline preacher. I don't. I don't. I don't put put a list of rules to follow. But I'm telling you, church, we better be careful. We're living in a wicked culture. Amen. Scripture is very clear. Come out from among them and be ye separate. There are some things we should not do. Places we should not go. Things we should not say. Things we should not hear. I'm telling you. And and and, and the world we're living in. You better be very diligent in this because it's everywhere. All right? When I was a kid, 
I mean, well, in the Nazarene church I was raised in, uh, they, you know, in the early 20th century, they broke away from the Methodists because the Methodists was too liberal. All right, so the Nazarenes were, matter of fact, on the Nazarene sign, you'll, it says holiness under the Lord. That's, they were a holiness movement. And so, you know, I, I couldn't do nothing growing up either. I couldn't go to the movies. I couldn't go to dances. And the Lord was looking out for me because I'm not a dancer anyway. So, you know, God was helping me. But, but again, and, and again, I, I, my point of this is that we live in a, in a time now where everything where we used to have to go to is right here. All right? My first exposure to pornography, you know where it was? I, I was working for one of the members of my dad's church, cleaning for his business. I was, I was kind of going out after I was clean, and I found he had a stack of of pornographic magazines. This guy was a board member in my dad's church. And that's where I first got exposed to pornography. You would think that'd be a safe. My point is this, guys. That was back when I was 12 years old. It's everywhere now. Parents, if, if, if your children have screens, you better have a filter on those screens. Don't well, they, they know better. No, I'm telling you, this thing's out to get them. My point is this yes, times have changed, but, but I'm telling you, we better be more vigilant today than we've ever been before. Amen. Amen. This is where we got to be. We got to be open. We got to be real. We, this is not, well, you know, I'm, I, and I know this, this, may, this may not be the most comfortable thing to talk about, but I'm telling you, it's where we're living today. I want to be real. I want to be what God wants me to be, right? Amen. Let, let, me, let me share this. We're getting ready to land here in a moment. We, we, I see the runway. We're not landing yet, but I see the runway. James 4 and 7, he says, Therefore submit to God. Everybody say submit. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. So there, there, there's that... that context of that scripture when i if i will submit to god which means to humble surrender submit myself in position with god then when i do that i can resist the devil and the devil will flee from me all right we understand that amen so the reality is this we have absolutely no reason to fear the devil all right amen we have no reason to flee from the devil. Okay? I want us to understand. He is a defeated foe. All right? Also, we have to consider that this admonition that Paul gave to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. He said, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A, a very common mistake of, of young people and, even, and just people in general today is that we can feel as if we are spiritually strong enough to resist temptation instead of fleeing from temptation. Sometimes we get to thinking, well, I've, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've studied God's word enough so I can stand face to face with temptation and I won't give in. Can I tell you that if that is our mindset, we are wrong. No one is strong enough to overcome certain temptations. That again is why Paul instructed Timothy to flee youthful lust. And here's where the enemy steps in. He manipulates the situation so that the young person or the person tries to resist temptation while he flees from the devil. Don't allow the devil to flip the script. You are not to flee from the devil. All right? You are to resist the devil after you've submitted to God. And he's the one that's going to be fleeing from you. If you will submit to God and flee from the temptations of sin, how do you flee from these temptations? Amen. I'm telling you, friend. If you've got a vice in your life 
that you just can't seem to conquer. You need to, if, you, you, if, if it's something you can get rid of, you need to get rid of it. Amen. And I'm just going to be as honest as I can be when it comes to you know, all of these gadgets we have. If you don't have accountability partners with these things, you don't need to have them. Amen? I'm just being honest. I'm telling you, friend, I believe that if we're not careful, because when, when, when what happens is when we allow... And again, this, this, this is a huge umbrella. It, it, very many v- variety of avenues here. Amen. But if I will submit to God, flee from the temptations of sin, the devil will have no evidence for accusation and he will flee from us. Don't find yourself on the wrong side of trust. God, it begins with repentance, right? It begins with being open and undone before God. Amen. I was listening today to an interview and uh, this this person was raised in a in a Pentecostal church. It, it wasn't a United Pentecostal church. I'm, I'm really, honestly, not not exactly sure, um, but it was a it was a Pentecostal type. Anyway, it, it had issues. All right. Come to find out, the pastor, his pastor, had had multiple affairs, and he sold heroin heroin from the pulpit. I mean, it, it was a messed up church, obviously, right? But, but here's the point I was, I, when I was listening to this interview he said you know he said it, there was always this, this fear it was like you know I mean there was never we were never told really to trust it was always you know it was fear fear that you know the, uh, he, he talked about a time when, when he had fell asleep during service and, <laughs> and, and when he woke up the place was empty he thought he missed it he thought he missed the rapture he said, I mean, he said, I, he said, I got, ter- I was screaming. And, and it was a rather large building. He said, I'm running. Didn't realize, but everybody, when they dismissed, they went downstairs for fellowship. He thought he missed the rapture. I, I, I did that once, I, not, not fall asleep in church, but I, I went home and mom and dad weren't home. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's happened. I've, I understand the Bible talks about the fear of God. But I'm telling you, I would rather have us to understand that God is someone I can be that can be trusted. That that trust and fear go together. Fear of God is a reverence for God. A fear of God is a is the fact that we realize, hey God, there is no one greater than you. There's no one mightier than you. Yes, God, you've got the ability to wipe me off the earth if you want to, but the reality is, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting in you. I would rather have that trust than, than walking every step wondering, I wonder if I'm doing good enough. It's not about doing good enough. It's about loving God and being open with God and saying, God, here it is. The good, the bad, the ugly. I want to be real. I want to trust you. How many here this evening know that God is one you can trust? My, my, my kids, when they were younger, sat on the counter and, and they, they, you know, jumping into my arms. There was something about that, 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 that thrill of being scared. They, they, they knew I had never dropped them yet. But, but there was that, that, that fear of like, well, you know, but when they would jump, then it was just like, oh, it was wonderful. I, I, I understand, amen, how that can be. But I'm telling you, friend, God ain't never left you. He'll never forsake you. God, God's not, not about to turn, turn on you. He can be trusted. Psalms 20 and 7 says, Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of our Lord, the Lord our God. I'm telling you, church, I believe in this. Amen. I, I, I'm, I don't want to ever compromise anything. Amen. But I'm telling you, friend, I, I, I have found and I am finding even more and more. The more that I have opened myself up and, and, and allowed myself to really be, to be real. Amen. He's one that can be trusted with that. <laughs> Isn't God wonderful? Amen. Amen. As we stand here today, I don't want to be on the wrong side of trust.
I, I want to, God, you can, you can trust, we, or we can trust you, God. I, I didn't hear the message, but I, my wife told me, and I referenced it the other day, Sister Tabitha spoke to our ladies during Ladies' Day, and, and we, make a, we, we make a statement where we say, you know, come as you are, come as you are. We believe that, don't we? Well, when we come as we are, what comes with us is all of the baggage we've got. Amen. Now, again, not everybody has the same kind of baggage, right? But, but we all got some baggage. There, there are those in this room tonight that you, you have had to deal with abuse. Physical, verbal, mental, sexual. That creates baggage. You didn't ask for it. You, you didn't do anything to deserve it. But it's amazing how the enemy can step into those moments and bring all kinds of shame and condemnation. I'm telling you, it's the work of Satan. But see, when we say come as you are, you're welcome to bring that with you. Because I'm telling you, church, the only one who can really help you process through all of that is him. And I, I know sometimes it, it's hard to face. It's hard. I, I get that. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to pressure nobody here tonight. But what I am saying is this. At some point, we've got to say, God, it's okay to not be okay. In the regards that, okay, God, I, I'm ready to let you step into my life. My mother, she is a she's a she's a wonderful lady. Had a birthday yesterday. 76 years old. And I get a lot of my traits from my mama. And one of those is she's like a stone wall. I hope she don't mind me saying this, but forgive me mama if you if you don't want me to say this, but since dad died, she said, you know, I I, I really haven't she's had a hard time feeling emotion. But she said the other night, it just like all of a sudden came crashing in on her. And she said, I felt what I guess would maybe would be an anxiety attack. And she said, oh my goodness, I feel sorry for those that have anxiety. Because she said it was just overwhelming. Felt like I needed to call somebody. I said, mama, who'd you call? Well, I usually talk to your dad about stuff like this. She didn't call nobody. She just laid there in her bed and she, she said, I've just learned that things that make me feel bad, I just don't think about them no more. That's her coping way. And she survived 76 years like that. I'm, I'm presenting to you and to her, that's probably not the, most, the best way of doing that, right? Why? Because there's a God who wants to help you. You don't have to, you don't have to keep pushing and, 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 and throwing stuff in corners and acting like they're not there. You've got a God who says, you know what, let me, let me help you with that. You're not made to carry that kind of baggage. I promise you, it can't all, maybe it can't all be unpacked in one moment, but I'm telling you, it's a journey that's worth taking steps towards. He that knows the truth, the truth shall make you free. I want to know the truth. And sometimes the truth that I know about this guy right here has been things I've really not wanted to talk about. I want to just kind of keep shoved in the corner. But God's teaching me, no, let's get that out. Let's unpack it. Let's let some things process. I'm going to help you with it. And I'm telling you, friend, when the Bible says he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, that's exactly what and who he is. But can I tell you this, this evening, it does begin with us. We've got to be willing to come as we are. No preconceived notions. No, I mean, and, and please don't take offense to this. I love you guys. You guys have been so good to me. And I'm grateful for everyone, every, every member of this congregation. And I say, the, say this with all due respect. I really, it doesn't matter what you think of me. I appreciate you. I, 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 I love the cards you give me every Father's Day and birthday. I love all of that. But, when I'm, not, but I'm not living my life to, to, to meet your expectations. I want to be real with Him. 
And if I can be really real with Him, guess what? I'm going to be really real with you as well. But it starts with Him. Amen? Anybody here this, this evening, I, I know I've said a lot and we've, we've kind of went various directions, but just making that first step by saying, God, pray the prayer of Psalms 139. God, I, I want you to search me. I need you to know my heart. I want you to see if there's any wicked way in me. That's me admitting that, you know what, Lord, there may be something that I'm not even aware of that's there. And Lord God, I, I, I wanna, I'm coming as I am to you today. Anybody want to just be real with God? Amen. Making that first step in that journey saying, Lord, I just want to be better. I want to, I want to be a the better version of me. I, it's not that I'm trying to be like anybody else, but Lord, I really want you, give you the, the, the authority to completely form me the way I need to be formed. Amen. This, this, this evening as we begin to sing this altar is open. Amen. There, there where you're standing or sitting, what, what, however, why don't we take those first few steps here this evening? Lord, help me today. God, I'm declaring my dependence to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hurting and broken within Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst from a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood. Sorrow i 
when mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood church can we take just a moment lift their hands to the heavens thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh thank you pastor for the word Lord take inventory of my life tonight God Lord search me oh God and see if there be any wicked in me Lord lead me to way everlasting today God oh I know what it's like to be on the wrong side of trust and I'm thankful God that when I mess up you're always there with loving arms to give me forgiveness Thank you for godly sorrow tonight, God. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you thankful today, church? You serve a loving God. That when you make a mistake, he's not there to beat you down. but He's there to lift you back up. Put your feet back on solid ground. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Can we clap our hands one more time for the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. You're mighty. I'm so glad that I, when I was on the wrong side of the tracks... That God did not leave me where he found me. That he brought me on this side. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that God brought you out of your darkness into his marvelous light tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word, Pastor. That really, that touches me because I, I know what it's like to be on the wrong side of trust. And I know what it's like sometimes to take God into your own hands and do what, you, what you're wanting him to do for you and not be patient. And I'm so thankful that God is patient with us. A few announcements. Don't forget, Restart Recovery tomorrow. Dinner is at 6 o'clock. Restarts at 6.30. Brother Nyswanger, this Sunday, praise the Lord. I'm going to see a mighty move of God. Also, I want to remind everybody that Kaylin's yard sale for Move the Mission is this Friday and Saturday here at the church. This Friday and this Saturday here at the church. If you have anything to get rid of, bring it. We brought something. It's sitting over there now. Somebody bought it. It's a bear sitting over there. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, ain't it? Yeah, staring at me the whole time I'm up here. Let's all stand and we'll dismiss in prayer. Father, we love you tonight. We're so thankful for your word you're giving us, God. 
Lord, I pray blessings over every single family that's here today, God. Lord, I pray this word changes us tonight, God. That we go outside the walls of this church, God, and we let it get deep in our souls today, God. Lord, we're asking you tonight to take inventory of our lives today, God. Lord, show us what we need to change today, God. Let us be a change in people today, God. Let us be a light into the world that's outside that's lost today, God. We speak the name of Jesus tonight, God. And I bless every single family, everyone watching today, God, in Jesus' name. Church, you are dismissed.